Hi, I'm Bernhard Klingenberg, and in this video I want to show you how the relative position of the mean and the median depend on the shape of the distribution. And why, for instance, the, for right skewed or left skewed distributions, we tend to prefer the median as a measure of center, whereas for symmetric distribution, we typically report the mean. Let's go to the website artofstat.com that I'm going to show you right here, artofstat.com, and then click on web apps uh, in, on the website. Now scroll all the way down, and this whole website will soon look different because I have to reprogram that, but for now, scroll all the way down and select the mean versus median app. Click on it, and what you will see is it comes up with some initial distribution. In our case, uh, it's a skewed distribution, and it's a right skewed distribution. And we see this in the histogram there, which shows a right skewed shape. And not surprisingly, what we see is that the mean, indicated by this orange triangle here, falls to the right of or is larger than the median, which is, uh, which is, uh, which we used the, the, the yellow circle as a symbol for. Now I can generate the data, and if you want, we can increase the sample size. Let's maybe suppose we have 50 observations, and then keep on generating right skewed distributions. And what you'll see and what you should look out for is how in each or almost each, the mean tends to fall above the median. So getting different shapes of right skewed distributions, uh, and in each one, we'll see how the mean is larger than the median. Now, for left skewed distribution, we have the exact same phenomenon, just the other way around. Here's a good example of a left skewed distribution. This distribution, again, lives on the number from zero to 100. Uh, this could be a distribution of the number of scores in an exam, although I hope that we really scores in the 20s and 30s. But what we see, again, is the mean score is slightly below or to the left of the median score, because now we're talking about a left skewed distribution. The tail stretches out to the left. Uh, and this is typically true for all kinds of left skewed distribution, that the mean tends to fall below the median. For symmetric bell-shaped distributions, like this one over here, what we typically observe is because of the symmetry the mean and the median are about the same. They typically fall right on top of each other. Let's see that if we simulate a couple of different data sets, and what you'll notice is often they're very, at first they're very close to each other, often on top of each other. Uh, and so you'll see there's not a big difference between those two measures of the center of the distribution. Now we like to use, oh sorry, let me go back to, to skewed distribution, left skewed distributions, like, like this one here, if you have more observations, right? You see distribution here. Age, for instance, any kind of age distributions are typically left skewed, like in this, in this picture here. Life expectancy, retirement age, are the age distributions. And we tend to use the median to describe the center of the distribution. What's the median retirement age? What's the median life expectancy? Because we think the median is a better measure for the center of the distribution. Uh, this is, might be more pronounced if you have actually fewer observations, then the difference might be more pronounced. Let's see if I can get a good simulated data set there. The difference between those two, although here they are reversed, it's not a good example. The difference between those two, maybe actually slightly more data. Uh, the difference between the two should be more pronounced. Similarly, if we have a right skewed distribution like this one over here, or maybe more data points, any of these one over here, we do tend to use, and our income distributions are a good example of right skewed distributions. We tend also to use the median as a better representation of the center of the distribution. And typically they don't have, if it's even more right skewed, they actually just create one uh, you can create your own by just clicking in the graph here. If you have a really right skewed distribution, let's put lots of points here. Um, so here, and then maybe just a few points here. What I'm hoping to see is that the mean can differ substantially from the median. And so we tend to use the median as the center of the distribution. I encourage you to play around with this app. There's different distributions you can, uh, you can explore. You can also supply your own values here to get histograms and, and, and uh, if you have some of your own data. Uh, but play around with the sample size, uh, with creating your own distributions, what happens to those two measurements as you, uh, as you create observations. And you can also actually click on a point to remove it. And so you can see how, for instance, outliers affect each one of these.
maybe let's do this one, let's reset. What if you have, again, a ton of observations here, and a ton, of just a few, I'll be able to click, and then we tend to get an outlier. So that's enough. We oops, maybe add some more. We tend to get an outlier over here. Look now, the mean and the median are about the same, almost the same, but if I have an outlier here, what's gonna happen is the mean is gonna be affected because of this huge quantity that this one outlier will contribute to the arith arithmetic mean, yet the median will not move much. So let's see, I'm gonna put an outlier here. What's happening is the mean moved up a lot to the right towards the outlier, the median not so much. Uh, let's remove the outlier, uh, then they're about the same, the measures are the same. If I put the outlier in, the median didn't change much, yet the mean moved a lot by just including this one single observation that's an outlier. This is it. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.